Good afternoon. I'm going to start with this question. How would you save the world if you only had one hour to do it? What would you do? Would you, would you sit down and think about it? Would you run? What was it? What am I saving it from? <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're saving your world. Imagine there is like a huge problem with your, with your company, with your product. What do you do? So Albert Einstein allegedly said he would spend 55 minutes defining the problem and then five minutes finding the solution. I think it's good to think about this before you get into that situation where you need to do that. So my name is Tomáš Vorel and I'm the product marketing manager here in Google. And, and I'm going to take you on a journey, journey with a product that I've been working on for the past two years. And, and two years ago, we were in this situation. In January 2018, we were losing one user every two seconds. One user every two seconds, and another, and another. It is 13,000 users since you came here in the morning. Imagine you come to a conference, and then you come back from the conference, and then, and then you are like, you have 15, 20,000 users less, right? It's, it's not a good situation to be in. So the product is called Files, and show of hands, who knows Files? Oh, amazing, that's more than I thought. Okay, so for those who, who don't know, well, don't worry, you're not really the target user, usually. Files is, is a product that does three things. Clean, browse, share. So it helps you free up space on your phone, it helps you uh, find files really fast on your phone, and it helps you share files offline without the use, without the use of your data. And, and with the product, with, with UX, with, with engineers, with product team, and as marketing, we managed to turn around this trend that I was talking about. And actually, earlier this, this year in August, we've reached 100 million users. And so I'm going to tell you uh, how we've done that. So there's this mantra in Google that we very often use, and, and mainly in marketing. It has three parts. And it can, it can be, we use it mainly when we are briefing agencies, uh, but it can be very helpful in these hard times as well. Uh, so it's simple. It's know the user, know the magic, connect the two. What does that mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you on, on how we've developed the product. So the first one is know the user. Let's, let's start with that. Who are we speaking about? Who, may, who knows how many people are there online today in, in the world? It's a number. Five billion, so, so seven billion people uh, in the world, or seven and a half, and three and a half, about half of the world is online. It depends on what you count as online because somebody connects every day, somebody connects every month. Uh, over the next five years, it is estimated that half of that half that is not yet online, so about 1.7 billion people will come online. 1.7 billion people. That's about six times more than the population of the US. And, and very often when we speak about these users, people have these preconceptions that, that this is who we are talking about. It's, it's this poor man in India, or it's, it's a businesswoman in Nigeria, but it's not always like that. It's, it's, it's people like us as well, but maybe they just didn't get the access as soon as you did. So, so they have the same wants and then the same needs, and, and they, they want to come online for the same reason why you want, because they want to share a picture uh, with their friend and, and they want to watch that video. But they're slightly different as well. And to bring it home for you, there's about 160 million people, 160 million people who will come online for the first time in Americas over the next five years. And so what is specific about these users? Number one is, and, and it's not only just these users, it's also majority of current users because they're not very often like you. So first, they are not just primarily mobile. It's not mobile first, it's mobile only. And, and that's, that's really huge. They've never used desktop and they never will. Imagine all of those frameworks of how things work that, you, that you've learned and developed over using, years of using desktop. Right? It's very different. The second thing is limited storage and in general, the performance of the phone. So all of their data are stored in the phone. They don't have a computer, they don't have a hard drive with their old pictures. They don't have a Google Drive photos backed up or Google Photos. And and at the same time, their phone is not as reliable uh, because it's not a high-end Android or iPhone. And so that's, that's also very different. And the third part is the data. So data are very often expensive. And some people, for some people, uh, we have this funny video from, from Mexico where we are launching our internet access program. And, and we were asking this girl, like, what is more important, most important for you? And she said, well, internet. And then what's the next thing? My debt, right? So for some people, <laughs> Data are really like, like it's, the, it's the value of the 21st century. And, and 
sometimes this reaches really weird dimensions that we can't imagine. For example, in India, about one third of people see on a daily basis uh, this notification. They run out of storage, so their apps don't get updated. Their system doesn't get updated. They can, they can, uh, they are more vulnerable to to attacks. They can't take additional pictures, and I hear that a lot of people with iPhones actually have this problem as well. Uh, <laughs> The second part is know the magic. So when you get a sense of the problem that we're dealing with, uh, we've approached the product development with, with a different mindset in world. If you look at the current apps that help you clean up space uh, uh, from your, from your uh, Android phone, they would look something like this. So they would have this like one button clean junk now solution. And very often users would not really know what they're doing. But it's really good for engagement. It drives very, very high engagement. And you have these notifications and you have these icons that these apps create on your, on your home screen that let you delete uh, and clean up uh, RAM memory. And it doesn't really, very, very often it doesn't help or it helps, but it's not really transparent for the user what actually is happening. And it's, it creates this perception that cleaning your phone or making your phone faster is some kind of magic. So we've approached it a little bit differently and, and instead of this one button fix it all, we've approached it with this way where we've offered different cards that users can use and then select what they want to delete and keep the, keep the, and select the, the files that they want to keep. Very simple navigation. We've also rethought an, another thing, so uh, the navigation. Very often we have this, when you have file manager and, and when you look into the, the system storage on your phone, it looks like this, right? So, so it has the folders like you would know on your phone. But it's, that's when you have the desktop background. That's when you've been working, when you've been using desktop for the past 15 years, 20 years. So what if you can drop the, the, the concept of folders and maybe go for something simpler? So we've categorized all files into filters. So you can see your downloads, images, videos. When you click on it, you can see actually where they come from. Because we're Google, we've also added search, and then we've also added suggestions, because very often what people need most is the most recent files they've just saved or downloaded. And then the third part is connected to. So we've built an app based on these insights, and we were ready to launch it. This was our launch. This was really our launch. And it had everything that comes with it. So we had a leak one month before the launch. It was a very busy evening. Then we had actually an official launch uh, with a big PR and a big campaign behind it. We've reached close to 10 million users, and we were one of the top three rated apps on Play Store. So pretty good app. This was all within two months. But then the reality set in, and that was, that was, that was a little bit different. So that's what I was telling you in the beginning when we were losing this one user every two seconds. So it was all about retention. And, and everything you do if you have an app is about retention. If your retention is poor, you're losing users no matter what, how many of you acquire. So we were like, what do we do now? Seriously, what do we do now? We have a great product, we see the need, but we're losing users. And so this was, this was our moment of, of one hour to save the world or one hour to save the app. We were in, a, in an organization in Google where we are kind of an internal uh, incubator. So we get a couple of month window to prove our concept and if you don't prove it, the project is killed. And some people were working on this for a year, year and a half, two years. And so that's when it's good to have the mantra that you can fall back on. Know the user, know the magic, connect the two. And that's exactly what we've done. Because I'm a marketeer, I really like the first one, know the user. So let me start with that. Uh, we assume that we have a good product because we had a good rating. It was a very well-rated app on the Play Store. And we knew there is a need because the other apps, they have hundreds of millions and billions of users. So what is wrong with our app? So we've done three analyses to, to really deep dive on this. And this might be tactical, but at the same time, it might be helpful. So number one is analysis of retention correlation. The second one is looking really deep into the user flow and understanding the flows of users in your app. And the third is targeted research. I'm going to walk you through each of them. So the first is retention correlation. This, is, this helps you understand what actions are the most important. You can calculate the action correlation with, uh, with retention. That means Users who do action X in your app, what is their retention? Users who do action Y, what is, their, what is their retention? And you can look into this for different channels, or you can look into this for different time periods. And retention is not always causation, but at least it helps you to understand what are the actions that the best users that stay around, what are they doing? Why are they sticking around? And sometimes it can also tell you why are they staying around? If they do X, why do they stay around? 
The second part, uh, or this is the outcome actually that you see. So you have some actions that for some channels, for example, are more be have better retention, some, some have worse. The second part is user flow, and this was something that, that we've done with my analyst about, about two years ago, and, and it's really complicated, so I won't go into a detail, but if I simplify it, it looks something like this. So you have the funnel where you, which you probably recognize acquisition, setup, aha, habit, and retained user in the end. And then, of course, you have all of the different stages of dormancy and, or churn tutors. And it's not just about understanding of how many users reach each step of the product. It's also about understanding the flows. And I think the flows are what is really important, to understand who goes from, from where and how many users are there. And so, for example, we knew that, that in the day, day zero, so basically when users came to the app for the first time, 63% of them didn't do anything. They dropped. And they either uninstalled the app or they stopped using it, and we never managed to reserve, uh, re, re, uh, reactivate them. So we've list down, we've, we've sat down, and, and, and this was one of the uh, action items for us, and we've list down about 15 hypotheses why, what, what can be causing this. And we've looked into it in detail, and basically this was the, the first window that you would see after you would accept terms and condition and go through some very basic onboarding. And then, and then it was pretty good. But we, we were organizing these cards that I was talking about by their size, by how much can a user free up space, which is pretty logical. But that wasn't really what the users were used to. Everybody was used to having an app that would have the first, the junk files, the temporary app files, which is kind of like, like temporary files that are really coming from different programs. So we, would, we brought that as a first one, no matter what was the size of that. And that really helped us with the conversion. And then we, you can see that we've also changed the, the CTA because uh, there was a series of tests, but, but free up and, and then a number of megabytes. People were not sure if they would click on it, whether it already deletes the file or whether they can review it. So we had a uh, copy like confirm and free up or select and free up. And that helped us again uh, improve the conversion. And then the last bit, of course, was adding some visual cues. So I'm not sure if it's visible on the, on the screen, but it was just some, some uh, slight coloring there. And that helps users navigate what to click on without forcing them to click on it. And again, that improved the conversion and then improved the retention. And then the third part is the targeted research. So when you segment your users and you understand the different areas and, and what they are doing and how they are sticking around, you can segment them into different categories. And this is really up to you. It's like retained users or users who are only trying. And, and you can name these categories whatever you want. And then you can ask those users because quantitative data can always get you only so far. But it's the qualitative data that help you understand what's going on that we've seen in many presentations today. And so they give you different responses, and it helps you understand why is something happening. And then, so if I, if I sum this up together, like these three analyses help you understand what to focus on, how many users will this change impact, so how important actually is this? And then thirdly, why, why are they behaving in a way like they're behaving, and so how do we need to change the things? We've used these three, learn, three analyses to combine into, into different applications. We've optimized ads, meaning what kind of actions should, should uh, ads be optimized for. We've done Play Store optimization. We've done change in the call to action in ads, change to calls, call to actions in the app, uh, changes to onboarding, and so on and so on. And, and uh, well, for example, our CPC uh, declined only very little. The CPCs are really low because these are mainly India, Africa, Latin America countries. Uh, the CPA, Went, got, got cut in half. And what is really, really much more important is that our retention rate jumped from 30% to 48%. And that makes the difference of how your user curve is, is developing. The second part is know the magic. So it's no brainer that, that cleaning can be quite a nuisance. Like who here wants to clean up files in their phone? Like probably no one, right? But at the same time, like that's not something that anyone can do for you. And so we got inspired by Marie Kondo's spark joy approach. <laughs> okay, good, you know it, perfect. And, and we realized that we need to spark some joy as well. So she's really good in this, and, and, and she got really popular with her approach. People love it, people love cleaning uh, when they use Marie Kondo's approach. So we decided to do a similar thing with the app and developed a little tidy, as we call it internally, a mascot that helps to spark joy with people when they do the cleanup. So after you do a cleanup, there's this little tidy that pops up and celebrates with you. And it's not just in the cleanup, it's throughout the entire journey. And, and Tidy celebrates with you. And you can see that in the reviews, like 
people say it's fun to clear space. Like, who would say that? Like, that doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> and, and in the reviews, you can even see that like, we spark condo-like joy after cleaning space. So that was exactly what we were aiming for. It's amazing. But we are at a, at a conversion uh, forum. So, like, you know, reviews, whatever. But it's also about, a, it's also about a, uh, the conversion. So we've run a test on ads where we didn't use Tidy and then we've used Tidy. And on the version with Tidy, we had 15% conversion rate. And you can say, okay, the, it's, it's not exactly the same, which is true. So there is another ad that we run on, this was on Facebook Messenger actually. And, and we've run these two different versions with and without Tidy. And, and the one on the, on the left uh, or on the right, with Tidy was much more effective. And then we ran actually this version, which, which doesn't have any, any UI and it has just Tidy. And that was even better, but that can't be applied to everything. But <laughs> testing is important. That's the takeaway. <laughs> and then the last bit. So connect the two. Uh, Google has this tradition of having April Fool's jokes. And so we thought, what are we struggling with keeping clean all the time? And, and, and then it hit us. It's the, it's the screen, right? Everybody's screen on the phone is so dirty. So if files is such, so amazing in, in cleaning, file, cleaning your phone, why can we bring it to reality? And so we've launched on April 1st the screen cleaner. And it wasn't just like a funky, fancy video on, on YouTube that we would publish or a blog post. We've actually worked with product and with UX and with Edge to integrate this in the product. So when, when you would hit clean screen, like your, clean, your screen would actually get cleaned. And based on the, the reviews and the comments, you see that people actually love this. And for very little budget, I can assure, assure you very little budget, we got three and a half million views and 30,000 worth of installs, of incremental installs. This paid off for, for, for the work that, that uh, we've put into it, excluding all the brand love that we got through it. And so with using this simple framework, know the user, know the magic and connect the two, it can really help you to, to turn around things when they are not going really well. And, and today, Files is an app with over 100 million users. And we are help users clean eight gigabytes per second across all of the devices. And we're adding three users every second. And users use it to share files offline as well with 150 terabytes shared uh, every single day, meaning that saves them on the usage of their data. And so I'm gonna leave you with this question that I started with. Like, how would you save your word if you had only one hour to do it? And so think about it before, before you get into that situation. Thank you. Thank you. That was great.